I'm Dara Breen. Welcome to this special edition of Mock the Week. As we look forward to what 2021 might bring, this is our final chance to reflect on the complete shit show of the last 12 months. <laughs> Sit back and take in some of the best bits, outtakes and unseen material from the series so far. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel oh, a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So what's going on here? <laughs> Oh, this is, this is the first time that Boris with wood has not ended in pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> this is Boris's YouTube video, How to Screw Things Up. <laughs> is this the answer to the question, what do you get if you cross a tool with a drill? <laughs> <laughs> this is a massive plank holding a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tongue twister, isn't it? It's, uh... How many flat packs can a fat brick pack if a fat brick mm. can't flat pack? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a suspicion he staple gunned his knee to the wood. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be at all surprised if this is a picture of him dismantling a Santa's grotto. <laughs> Is that the correct answer, by the way? That is Prime Minister Boris Johnson holding some wood and a screwdriver. <laughs> you know what, because people are going to say it's some drill and it's not. <laughs> it could be a drill. If you put a drill bit in it, but it's got a screwdriver bit in it, so it makes it a screwdriver. I will beat you to death with a shoe. Uh, <laughs> 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 His shoes are massive. <laughs> You'd be like a, a, like a, a, a wolf. That's like being so, that's like somebody saying, I'm going to beat you with a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've walked in on my dad and his mates just having an argument <laughs> because none of them have been able to erect the shed. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing this picture? Because there is a, it's very difficult to get. Boris, could you pose taking food off a child? Could you do that? <laughs> <laughs> One shot of you taking the food, and the child going, uh, like a child holding, like, Oliver Twist, uh, and Boris going, yeah. no! Uh, <laughs> the Tories have now given up any level of pretense of not being Disney-level villains, haven't they? Like, I'm just wait I'm waiting for their zero-tolerance Dalmatian policy. <laughs> Now, obviously, by the way, you know, there was a lot of debate over the summer about balance in the BBC and us having to, you know, reflect that. So maybe, maybe the kids aren't that hungry. <laughs> <laughs> OK, in other news, um, how was early feminist icon Mary Wollstonecraft honoured recently? With a stat. Cheers. With a statue, which sounds wonderful. Well, do you know what? I've got mixed feelings about this. I'm not offended by it. That's not why I don't like it. I don't like it because it's shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> although, I will say, it, it is a feminist statue because, if you ask me, it's about time we had a female Terminator reboot. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks like someone who was stood on a fire hydrant at the moment it explodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and look at other women's bits. I'm a heterosexual woman, and, um, does everyone else's pubic hair look like a cauliflower? <laughs> 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 do, uh, do you think it's a cauliflower, or do you think she's trapped a barrister? <laughs> <laughs> You could be pretty sure that this statue was done in the winter. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you've, got, you've got to appreciate the detail that the hair on the downstairs is exactly like the hair up there. <laughs> you have to appreciate the detail. Also, such a feminist, she added abs. I'm here for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, the woman is ripped. I mean, it's kind of chubby cheeks, though. I mean, there is an element of she's storing nuts for winter in the cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> They should make all statues naked, though. I mean, it would certainly give a new meaning to Nelson's column. <laughs> <laughs> the the expression on the on the statue's face it's it's quite severe. I feel like it's for every woman who's ever been told by a man, "Cheer up, love. You look lovely. You smile." <laughs> <laughs> Why is the move angered Welsh shoppers, for example? Because you can only buy essential items, can't you? Yes. In a pandemic, you cannot buy someone a Get Well card in Wales. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, business will be forced to close include beauty salons, car dealerships, auction houses, nightclubs, strip clubs, which, you know, i got to say is unfortunate. Nothing for the small business owner like myself. Uh, just in March, unfortunately, I put all of my money into a strip club in Cardiff uh, <laughs> called Super Spreaders. Uh, <laughs> and that name has backfired. Uh, <laughs> But genuinely, some of the some of the places that shut, it, it was just common sense. Like they, the, the, the way they break it to you sometimes, they're like, um, and bingo halls are shut. Good, good. The people who go and play bingo are the people at risk. Any <laughs> any venue where there's more than four people called Barbara in at any one time <laughs> yeah. should be shut down. <laughs> That's a super spreader. Were there any strippers called Barbara? No, uh, no we have a totally anti-Barbara policy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're all called Aurora. Uh, <laughs> they're all named after space things. That was part of my theme. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Nebula. And on the second stage, <laughs> Nebula. <laughs> and then Black Hole, no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and don't forget something for the ladies, Brian Cox. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what's going on here? Ah, this is the second time this week he's got stuck in the background of Windows XP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is the young Joe Biden on the site of what will eventually become New York. <laughs> <laughs> Biden turning up distraught to find the Trumps have nicked the White House. <laughs> <laughs> Is he so excited about the vaccine, he's already at next year's Glastonbury? <laughs> <laughs> This is just a man whose wife is called Jill going up a hill to fetch a pail of water. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's nice for him to return to his birthplace of the Garden of Eden. <laughs> <laughs> it is, of course, US President-elect Joe Biden, pictured recently in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. What does he urge Americans to do for the first 100 days of his presidency? Stop breathing. <laughs> <laughs> he, wants, he wants Americans to wear masks for one hundred, the first 100 yeah. days of his presidency. And I love the fact that it's 100 days. And he's like, after that, you're on your own. I'll have been dead for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I think when they start telling Americans to take their masks off, they should do it by, like, the most good-looking one first. So, like, day 101, it's, like, a 9 out of 10, and then an 8 out of 10. Like, if I lived in America, I'd still be wearing mine till 2025. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's actually considered incredibly offensive to say the phrase 8 out of 10 on Mock the Week. <laughs> <laughs> There is an age division, there is a, and I think you and I are. There's definitely a, like a line in the, and an ice flow that when the lockdown occurred in our industry, impossibly knows it cracked, and you all went podcast, podcast, podcast. Let's make, <laughs> let's make TikToks, let's make TikToks, yeah. and, and, and do new media ways of doing our job. And we all went, yeah, retirement's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I get a long time with me telescope. Uh, oh, we, we all assumed you died of COVID. <laughs> seen those guys for a while, they must have succumbed to the virus. <laughs> There's a lot of kind of like, we're all in this, let's do, let's spend this as a, you know, let's do this, write this properly. No one is doing Joe Wicks a second time. No, no one is going anywhere near no. Joe Wicks a second time no. they, because it feels like an affair you had <laughs> and now the thought of going back to Joe and seeing Joe and the stuff he saw yeah. uh, and, <laughs> and you also know you didn't keep it up and if Joe sees you again, you're going to be all, oh, hello, Joe. <laughs> and, <laughs> There's every chance that Joe hasn't kept it up either. I think Joe also stopped. Uh, and, and then if we go back, it'll just be like a live webcam into that room in his house and Joe sitting there with a the can going, ah, oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, just run around, run around for a while. I don't know. Do a, do a, ah, oh, jump in the air. <laughs> <laughs> That, that sounds like what Joe Wicks would be like in uh, Super Spreaders. Mm -hmm. Just sat in the front row going, turn around for me. Oh. <laughs> do a star jump. <laughs> <laughs> do, do a Spider-Man one. Go on, do a Spider-Man one. <laughs> That's your favourite. <laughs> Spider-Man leave. Hi, Joe. How are you? Good to have you here. Uh, <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features Donald Trump. I am the greatest president that ever lived. I beat COVID, I had a cocktail of drugs that no one else could afford, and I drank bleach. <laughs> and now I'm going to beat Joe Biden. Tell him, Bill. 
Well, nothing to argue with there, Mr. President. Let me go further. I say you are the greatest creature to have walked the earth since the dinosaurs. You have beautiful golden hair. You are slim, trim, and humble. You are the humblest. No one has ever been more humble. And uh, thank you for writing this script for me. <laughs> How many people will vote for me, Bill? Uh, seven. These, uh, these seven. <laughs> That's not all. We also have these, uh, we also, these six. Uh, <laughs> there would have been 14, but I, uh, I infected them with COVID. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you with some jokes. See what you think. I'm not saying Joe Biden is old, but on his last birthday, he lit the candles and he, he tried to blow them out and he was beaten back by the flames. <laughs> I love people. Take my wife, uh, you might as well. She won't be in the same room as me. <laughs> Melania and I have been uh, happy for 30 years, and, and, and then we met. We... <laughs> and don't worry, I'm not infectious. <coughs> <coughs> so goodbye, folks. Thank you. <laughs> the answer is 14 billion. What is the question? Is it the current price of a Freddo? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure of the regulations anymore, but is this how many people can you meet outside? <laughs> is it in a briefing, on average, how many times does Professor Chris Whitty say, next slide, please? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many sperm would I waste over lockdown two? <laughs> Is it, uh, after Eat Out to Help Out, how many chilli points did Rishi Sunak have on his Nando's card? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, how many children would I have if socks could get pregnant? <laughs> oh. oh, so you'll cut Mark Simmons wanking. Uh. But as soon as it's aired, it's disgusting, it's, is it? It's not wanking, it's making love to a sock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not getting any Christmas presents in your house. What are you put? <laughs> Moving on, though, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> is, this, uh, is this just after he said Jeremy Corbyn three times in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually um, Keir Starmer reading our jokes that we're making about him on Mock the Week before looking in the mirror and seeing the TV in the reflection where he sees me staring down the camera saying back the jokes he's just read off that paper as he wonders, who is the real shadow? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> Is he just posing next to a mirror to give the illusion he's got more followers? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hall of Mirrors. This one makes you look incredibly dull. <laughs> <laughs> Is he reading the script? Is he reading the scripts for the Crown Series 10 and realizing that his character doesn't have any lines? <laughs> <laughs> I do feel for Jeremy, though. He was kicked out of an organisation he was in for basically his whole life. It's like when I was kicked out of my scout group for being 34. <laughs> <laughs> There's a mass exodus of people on the left of the Labour Party leaving, and I just think having loads of people leaving isn't always a bad thing. <laughs> you know, it's like when you do a gig and there's a stag do and they go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think, you know, well, no, the, the numbers are fewer, but the vibe's definitely better. <laughs> the, the, the media are calling it an exodus, which, given the context, doesn't feel like the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, what did presidential candidate Kanye West get for his wife Kim Kardashian for her 40th birthday? Oh, this uh, is mad. Yeah. A hologram of her, of her dead dad. Yes! <laughs> you put it like that, it sounds wrong. I mean, it's, he's so arrogant that he brought back her dead dad to say that he was a genius. Yes. That's... <laughs> this, is, uh, this is part of the, of the speech done by the hologram of Robert Kardashian. You married the most, 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 most genius man in the whole world, Kanye West. <laughs> Not his actual words. Scripted for the dead man by Kanye West. It's the weirdest... It's so mad. It's so mad. If, if you were going to be speaking as Robert Kardashian, like, if I'd have made that hologram, I would have made him apologise for getting OJ off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, too soon. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I think, though, that Dead Dad hologram is the album David Bowie never made? <laughs> It'd be great to win arguments. I think everyone should get a hologram of their partner's dead dad. <laughs> Go like, it's your turn to do the washing up, and if you don't believe me, listen to your dead father. Oh! <laughs> He's right! <laughs> <laughs> they said... Why do 
don't you just make a glove puppet of your partner's <laughs> dead father? Yeah. What's, yeah. What's that? Cheap, right? Mary's dad? <laughs> mm. Oh, Mary could do more around the house. Uh, <laughs> can't you be allowed to go for drinks with his friends? <laughs> She's a great disappointment to me. <laughs> uh, uh, don't put me back in the box. Don't put me back in the box. <laughs> You're going back in the box. There he's dead. If it, if it hadn't been for that heart attack, I would have died of shame at the <laughs> <set>. <laughs> I think it's quite nice. I think she should be allowed to grieve her dead dad as she as she chooses to. You know, I would have loved to have heard my dad say, "I'm proud of you." You know, he's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dear BBC, as a hologram of a dead father, I... <laughs> the tone of the debate is very disrespectful. <laughs> Dear BBC, as Fat Joe Wicks. <laughs> <laughs> So, has Joe Wicks started calling himself Fat, fat Joe Wicks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello, I'm Fat Joe Wicks. <laughs> Jump up and down. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not sure if he's smoking or if this is like a, a twirl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that, not, uh, is that not a hand puppet that, of his dead father? That, oh, <laughs> what is it, Dad? <laughs> you liked me more when I was thin, didn't you, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. not thin anymore, am I? I've got an MBE and I ate it. <laughs> 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 You don't know me! <laughs> You're just a hand! Uh, there's not even a glove there. Uh, just I'm, picking up a me I'm just picking up a message from Ed Burns' wank song. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him I miss him. <laughs> yes, I'm happy to move on. I'm very happy to move on. I, I felt it peaked at Fat Joe Wicks, and then we got to the wank song. I didn't, that wasn't my choice. <laughs> I can't move on. I miss that sock so. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of wank socks, in other news, how is Nigel Farage? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, though, what's being kissed goodbye this Christmas? Grandma. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> leave it out, leave it out, you slag. <laughs> 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 Okay. You alright, Java? Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a bit of a cockney moment. Oh, you see, it's all right when he does this, but when I start going fiddle -de -diddle -de -de, he hates You're it. a racist. <laughs> <laughs> does anyone know what the correct answer is? Yeah, clearly we do. We're just mucking about. You are. <laughs> Luke, I'm afraid the ship's crew have refused to go any further until they've had smashed avocado on toast. I knew we shouldn't have tried to get home in the millennial falcon. For <laughs> fuck that! <laughs> the crew refused to go home until they've had avocado on toast. We shouldn't have... Oh, I can't do either. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's harder than it looks, and I've gained a lot of respect for you, Angela. <laughs> Don't diss a Zoom audience. Apparently, the woman whose whose room is actually on fire in the top right corner. <laughs> oh there. God! Uh, that is very. <laughs> you really need to turn down the bars on that heater, okay? Because that is <laughs> normal light everywhere else, but you live on the sun. Uh... <laughs> Oh, it's just not on, it just says I'm Dara Breen. Okay, fine. The other thing we forgot to put on, we didn't put the words hello and welcome to Mock the Week. Uh, so the show <laughs> just started with me going, uh -huh. I'm Dara Breen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is a fairly urgent beginning to a television programme. You don't even know what you're watching yet. I'm Dara Breen. That's the most important thing. <laughs> okay, moving on, and what is clearly my favourite story of the week. Why has the Pope been in trouble this week? Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, this is um, on Instagram of a very scantily clad model. Yes, now this is the Pope. Uh, there she is. Slightly back. Ooh, <laughs> 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 yes, please. On a skin on show. Uh, his Instagram account was called Liking a Picture of Brazilian Bikini Model Natalia Garabotto. Now, obviously, this, there's a million different reasons that it could happen. I mean, I'm, having not seen the picture, you'd probably presume, sure, listen, this could be anyway. <laughs> and the off chance it was just like a, a lovely image that somehow indicated the beauty of God's creation. That may be what he was trying That somehow there would be a scriptural element to this that if you said, oh, that's a lovely image that you could possibly put John 3.16 over this or something. If you haven't seen the picture, this is the picture the Pope liked. Wow. <laughs> 
about 50% of the people on Zoom just turned off their camera. <laughs> <laughs> it is you know, I would drop the... I'd, let's not keep it up for the entire time we're doing this. Yeah, uh, sorry, by, by which I mean, obviously, the picture. Uh, <laughs> but it is... Uh, it's very difficult to spin that oh, in a kind of... Uh, a... Well, I, I think you'll find it promotes reading amongst the youth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Genuinely, though, when I, when I was raised Catholic, and I quite like the Pope, but he's done a lot to sort of modernise his, his role as Pope Francis, and when I heard he'd like to model's Instagram photo, I was like, oh, really? And he's working with some Instagram influencers? <laughs> and then I heard it was a lingerie model, and I was like, OK. And then I saw that it was in a sexy school outfit, and I was like, of all the kinks for the head of the Catholic <laughs> Church to have, sexy school kid was not what a dominatrix in a gimp mask would have been better. Yeah, I know, I know. Surely this is the least controversial sex scandal involving a pope in history. We should be celebrating this, okay? Yes, she's in a school uniform, but that's an adult woman, okay? <laughs> we need to wean popes yeah. off sex scandals. This is essentially the pope equivalent of switching to smoking menthols. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the Vatican are blaming Instagram. That's like if your girlfriend found texts from another woman on your phone and you're like, I can't believe O2 have done this. <laughs> this is outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> Talking as if the Pope is in control of his own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, not the Pope like sat on the bog going, let's see what's happening on social media. <laughs> it's probably some disgruntled social media manager who's been like fired or had his pay cut and he's gone, first thing I'm going to do, let's like that picture. A slightly more junior cleric would be in charge of his social media account. You've got to presume that the bishop got bashed. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if it was the Pope. Imagine the Pope sliding into your DMs. Oh, You've got the best opening line available in history, just going, do you want to spend an eternity in hell? Well, then let me spend one night in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely lines from kids' films and TV shows. And today's show, children, has been brought to you by the letter P and the number 45. Oh. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Gosh, Mr. Tumble, you do have a low sperm count. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thomas the tank engine huffed and puffed as he pulled out of Paddington. Paddington rolled over and had a postcoital <laughs> marmalade sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you a secret, said Tigger? I killed Carol Baskin's husband. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper Pig. Great, with rice. <laughs> In this week's Horrible Histories, we're going to be covering 2020. Oh, no! <laughs> Next up, it's the world's first fully animated pornography. Sex Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just joined in with the song and I lost control of the bus. <sighs> <laughs> Mummy Bear said, somebody's been sleeping in my bed. And Daddy Bear said, well, you don't have to rub it in, you whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, here come the seven dwarves. Grumpy, bashful, sleepy, dopey, crackhead, nonce and gimp. <laughs> On this week's Angelina Ballerina, we'll be finding out if Angelina can get a job in cyber. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, fat controller, said Thomas. <laughs> Fuck you, call me, you grey faced twat. <laughs> <laughs> I really love you, Peter Rabbit. Oh, wait, sorry, no, rampant. Rampant Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've told him it's a giant peach, but the truth is, James is just very, very small. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know, children, that without rap music, we wouldn't have passed the parcel music? 
And who's this in the night garden? Oh, it, oh, it's just some drunk bloke with his ninky nonk out. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is unlikely things to hear on a charity appeal. Remember, all the proceeds we raise tonight are going to charity. A 19-year-old pole dancer who I'm putting through college. <laughs> This is an urgent appeal for your money. That's right. I'm mugging you. <laughs> we believe every animal deserves the right to a long and healthy... Fucking flies. <laughs> <laughs> Banjo is a stray dog. For two years now, we haven't been able to find him a home. Well, can you blame people? Look at him. He's like a rat on stilts. <laughs> Today, we are raising money for celebrity coke addicts. Welcome to White Nose Day. <laughs> Remember, you have to be over 18 to call our donation line because many of the celebrities manning the phones aren't allowed to speak to children. <laughs> Please, for the children. What, it's going out on ITV2? Oh, what's the fucking point? <laughs> The Egomaniac Society. Because without us, you are nothing. <laughs> Naked, cold, without access to running water. Please, stop flushing the toilet while I'm in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Can you help me find a cure for my sex addiction? I tried fucking everything. <laughs> What does a red cross mean? That your answer is wrong. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Children in Need. I'm Gary Barlow, and if people like me just paid their tax, we wouldn't need a telethon in the first place. <laughs> Please donate so that we can reunite Tupperware with its lids. <laughs> Homes destroyed, lives ruined, a trail of destruction. They should have named that hurricane after my ex-wife, huh? <laughs> Sometimes Edna can go days without speaking to anyone. Help connect her with her friends. Buy her the gift of a Ouija board. <laughs> Pudsey, can you pop the eye patch on? Your eye socket's upsetting the children. <laughs> It's just so unfair. Dominic has to travel over 250 miles just to test his eyesight. <laughs> and so, having dug them the well, we now want you to send us some money that they can throw in and wish for some water. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dory, you're a scientist. Tell me this, tell me this. First, I'm not, but go on. Coronavirus? Yeah. Is it a thing? 